It's like he knows. Look, look at this one. What are you looking at us? Look at the look at that eel. one. Look at the eel. We can't take a picture. What if the eel eats those little fish? Nope. No? I'm going to take a picture. Good. Look at a baby. Oh, so cute. Oh, you just missed him.
it because if they do, she's not going to be able to fend for herself and will kill her. Well, believe it or not, in June of 1991, Jenkins and Aquarium had just opened their doors. We had the glass enclosure, we had the pool and the dock. The one thing we didn't have were seals. Well, down in Brigham Team, the one that kept saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember that seal Lucy came from the town up at Point Pleasant Beach? Didn't they just open up an aquarium? And with that, they said, you know what? Ring, ring, hello, Jenkinsons. How would you like to have a seal? She was found just seven streets down from where you're located. We think she would be great in your aquarium. How did they know about her? Because you see, when Lucy's with them, she's just following what the, everybody's saying for her. And even here, she follows us as well because we work with her a lot. But the thing that happened was, they just said, we think you would do a great job with her. And because we were so close, here she comes. And there she is in our exhibit. Now what you have to realize is, Lucy has been in our exhibit for the past 30 years. That makes her approximately, and we're approximating because we always say she's 31 to 32. Now I have to up it, because she's really now 33 maybe. But we don't know exactly how old she is because we don't know how old she was when we found her. But she continues to do very well with us. Now, take a look at the seal over there with Miss Julia. She looks a lot different. Her name is Noelani. Her name means Mist of Heaven. And she came to us all the way from California. If I take you out to Sausalito, California, they were out in their boats. And they saw this little seal in the water. And as they got closer, they said, you know what? She is totally undernourished. What is wrong with this seal? There's got to be more to the story. Well, they continued to follow it for a little bit. And then they scooped her up and they decided to take her back to their stranding center. Again, it's like a hospital. And they started working with her immediately. Well, no money not to be outdone by anybody said, I'm going to show them, and I'm going to start eating too, and I can do this. They honestly didn't think she would make it through her first weekend. Well, there she is out there. And she starts eating, and while they're working with her, they found out something very interesting. No money was born blind and has never seen the day in her life. So now you've got two blind seals in front of you. And is that a prerequisite for seals? No, it's not. Now, the next thing is, she's out there. And they're working with her stills, trying to get the weight on her. And the next thing you know, they figured out something else. Milani is considered a hydrocephalic seal, which means she gets water pressure on her brain. In a human, you take you put a shunt to the side of the head, you press the shunt, it relieves the pressure, and a human can live kind of a normal life. You have to be careful, but you can live pretty well. Unfortunately for the seals, you cannot do that surgery. It would kill them. So we are not going to do the surgery for no one. They told us to raise her like a normal everyday seal. So out in California, they said, you know what? They've been reading about how we're raising Lucy, a blind seal, for many, many years. And they turned around and said, you know what? That, that town in Point Pleasant Beach, they've got that aquarium. They've got a blind seal. They ring, hello, Jenkinson. How would you like to have another one? We think you would do great with no money because you've done such a job with Lucy. Guess what? She's been here ever since. Milani just turned five this year. That's what we're thinking, okay? So now we continue to go with Melody. So now they're both in captivity because they're in captivity. They have to be fed three times a day. Their diets consist of kingdom, mackerel, herring, and squid. Although it is of restaurant quality, we do sometimes add vitamins so they can be the best they can be. Now, the one thing that the seals will always do in the wild, they like to blow bubbles, they wait their deliver, and they spin. Well, when you have them in captivity, and the vet comes every Sunday, if they need to be seen by a vet, you can't wait all day for them to come out of the water. So using fish, we have organized them to do certain things for the vet. One, we have them to come and sit up on the dock. We put our hands on their heads, sit down to their flippers. If there's anything that hurts them, they will make a low coughing sound or grunt, and we know right away something needs to be fixed. The other thing is, we ask them to do... Lucy, come sit up on the top. Ready, sit up straight, foot, and she shows you her nails. The nails are extremely long. They can be broken, they can be cracked or weak. If you think it's difficult cutting all these nails sitting on the floor in front of you, you should try cutting those nails in the water. It's unbelievable, but it must be done. And finally, believe it or not, three times a day with Lucy, we're working on it very hard with love. Now, Lonnie, Lucy gets her teeth brushed. 
And it's done three times a day. She's got three types of toothpaste. And that's because we don't have to take her to the dentist. Look at the size of her mouth. You wouldn't want to take her either. So, that's what we do. In captivity, we also have to stimulate them and encourage them through enrichment to want to stay here. You notice they have a basketball and the Indian clubs, and then they also have the boat top uh, bumper. And they will play with those animals. They have different things they like, especially rubber ducky, the big one, and also the hula hoops. Now, I'm going to go back to where we broke down and we had pinnipeds on one side and humans. We're going to break that down one more time. Are you ready? We are going to do ear seals on one side, and on the other side, we're going to do true seals. Ear seals are just like they sound. If you look at them, they have a flap on each side of their head. That's their ear, and that's how they hear. If you look at Lucy and Ohlone, there's no ear. They have a hole on each side of their head. It works as an inner ear, and they hear just fine. Now, the next thing, the ear seals are the ones that you see on TV. They bark back and forth. Lucy and Melani do not bark. They have a low guttural cough sound that they'll make, but it's really quite funny. And finally, the ear seals are the ones that you see on TV. They come out, they walk on the stage, they like playing board or something. I got news for you. Lucy can't do that. I need to get down on Their flippers are shorter, their, butt, their stomach drags on the ground, and it looks like they're going to the disco every place they go. Now, the other thing that we want to tell you about our seal friends, and these are two very important things for the adults. One, right now we are extremely happy in the state of New Jersey because they have now decided to ban plastic bags. I want you to take a good look at our girls in the water. Their heads are the same size as those plastic bags. You can see they play with a lot of different toys and they come up inside of them and everything. And you might say, oh, but why do we have to worry here with plastic bags? Because this winter, as it got colder and colder, the more and more seals showed up. At one point, we had seven seals right out here in front of our ocean. And they were having a great time because the water was cold. Well, they don't like the cold water, and they're in with us. But if you have to get that plastic bag off your head, their flippers are not long enough to remove it. You remove it, it becomes very detrimental to that. And finally, this is for all of your adults, because you're the ones who have to do this. It is against the law for you to be within 150 feet of a wild seal. When it's outside or inside, you can't be near it. Unless you have special assignments from somebody, I don't know where you're going to go. However, just so you know, to give you an example, if you're outside having a picnic and the seal comes up out of the room and decides to join you, and you get caught, the minimum fine for the first offense we believe is $750. However, in this area, it's $2,500. So it depends on what town you're in or how much the fine will be. And we've never seen anybody beat that fine either. This concludes the feeding of the seals at this time. As I told you, I will remain on the floor if you have any questions you'd like to ask. We hope you have a great day here at the Business Aquarium. And again, have a great day. Thanks.
notice at the left end of the tank, and this is our largest tank in the aquarium, it's 58,000 gallons, you'll notice that a yellow frisbee drops into the water. When that happens, one of the black tip reef shark will notice that the yellow frisbee is there, and it means it's their meal. They go down and they eat the fish. This is done to the three that are in there, and we still have somebody sitting across from the tank writing down exactly everything they need. The next one, believe it or not, is Swaji. He's at the top right now in the middle as he spins by. He's one of our larger sharks. He's about 10 and a half feet long, weighing 300 pounds. If you look at him, Swaji is on this That's because Swaji does not. Swaji has no lips, so he can't close his mouth. You will always see his teeth. If you don't see his teeth, it means you've got to get there and get him. Now, the next shark that you see, there are three that are swimming around, are our nurse sharks, and they are the largest. The nurse sharks are approximately 10 and a half feet long, weighing 330 pounds. What I want you to know is if you look at the right time, the right side this time, look in the water. You'll notice that our feeder is dropping in a hula hoop. When they do that, the nurse shark will swim up into the hoop, get the fish that's in the center of the circle, and leave the hoop area. They take the hole out, and they get ready to feed it again. Somebody again is recording the exact amount that the sharks eat. Now, there's one other shark that swam by. It is called a spotted movie dog. If you look at the right hand side, underneath the little pile of rocks, you'll probably see one of the Wobie Goggins there. The Wobie Gong is a very interesting shark because he's camouflaged. And it's very hard to see when he's in the tank. This way the black tip shark's food, but he didn't like it. Now, there's something very interesting that a lot of people will also ask questions of. And that is, I thought the sharks always had to swim in order to live. And what we want you to know is that depends on what sharks you're looking at. Different species do different things. Example, when you see Swaji, the sand tiger shark with all the teeth, and the black tip reef sharks that are on the top of the tank, and when you came in, the first tank on your right had three leopard sharks. If you notice, those sharks constantly swim. That's because if they don't, they cannot get the oxygen they need to breathe, and it kills them. So you have to be really careful with that. Now, the other sharks, the spotted movie gun, lay on the bottom, and so did the nurse sharks. How come? Well, believe it or not, they have a special muscle in right by their gills that they can pull the water in over their gills and they can breathe while they're laying at the bottom of the ocean floor. They are fine to be that way. If you ever saw a sand tiger or a lion, that's where my knees are like laying on the ground. Happy, you got Now, the last thing that I want to leave you with, actually, there's two things. Yeah. You have to remember, I told you, sharks are basically very big What you have to realize is if you are in the ocean and you want to be bit by a shark, if you ever watch those newspapers or the TV shows, most of the people who get bit by a shark are not killed. Because you see, when a shark takes a bite of a human, they don't like the taste of flesh and they immediately spit it out. So it usually is not that deep in your body. And you should be able to survive. The other thing that we tell you about oh, is so 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 you just have to remember that you can probably hit them in the nose and be okay. However, the one thing that I want to leave you with are these two things. One, believe it or not, you have more of a chance going to a Home Depot or Lowe's and getting hit by a toilet boiling off the shelf than if you have getting bit by a shark in the ocean. Not in your eyes. So you got to think that that way is definitely good. The other thing I want to tell you is, when you go out into the public and you're in some of the restaurants, every once in a while, you're going to see certain dishes. And believe me, sharks get a bad rap for a lot of things. One of the dishes that you're going to see in restaurants is shark fin soup. 
I'm going to like to share with you. The next time you're in a restaurant, you should start fixing. Do me a favor, order the split bean or order some other type of soup. Because you see, when they make a soup like that, you can look at pictures on the internet of them harvesting the shark fins, which they are cutting off of their bodies, and all they are doing is dumping them in water and serving you a broth that they call shark skin soup. Shark skin soup. Sorry. Um, so we encourage you to try something else because it loses a lot of the animals in the sea. Oh, I take a picture. I just took a picture of the shark.